Number one, the first expectation is click on the PowerPoint, please. The Jews expected a king. They expected a king, just any king at all. But he, Jesus, was the king, the king. Look with me in verse 17. This is how they did not expect it. Verse 17 said this, And they clothed him, Jesus, in a purple cloak and twisted together a crown of thorns and they put it on him. This is what they did to Jesus. Because the Jews did not expect him to be a king, you know what they did? They stripped him of his clothes and they whipped him 40 times minus one. The Romans would whip a man who was condemned, a criminal. They would whip a man 40 times minus one because 40 times of whipping would kill a man, Romans believed. So they minused one. They subtracted one whip so that they get him to the brink of death, get him to the edge just so that he can walk or, or move around. And how they whipped Jesus, as you know from the Passion of the Christ uh, story, is that they would take a five-fingered flail, oh, a chain whip, maybe out of leather, but usually out of chain, with five fingers. And at the tip of each five finger, they would put glass or bone, very sharp pieces of objects. And what they would do is they would flick the whip, and it would cut into the back of Jesus' uh, Jesus's, uh, shoulder area, and they would slowly tear his flesh down. They would do this 39 times. His back would be raw and bloodied. It wouldn't look like the back of a normal human being. And on that back, on this back that was bloodied and ripped apart, you probably could see part of his bone or maybe even his rib cage. On that back, Mark tells us they, they put a purple cloth, cloth on him. After a little while, that cloth would start to coagulate with blood, meaning you get a scab. And just like you get a Band-Aid, if you have a cut and you put a Band-Aid on it, and it scabs over, when you pull it, what happens? The scab comes off with the Band-Aid, right? The Roman soldiers would tear that purple cloth off later on on Jesus' back, and more blood would flow. And they put a crown of thorns on his head. It was so, so prickly and sharp that the centurions would have to get a tong to pick it up and place it on his head and they would use reeds, sticks, little sticks and just beat it down on Jesus' head. Now remember, Jesus didn't eat or drink anything the whole day. His last meal was on Friday, right? Thursday. And it's Friday now. This is Good Friday. Jesus didn't have anything to eat or drink. So his head hurts if you're dehydrated, if you ever play basketball for a long time or some sports. Your head starts hurting if you don't have Gatorade or water, right? Jesus didn't have anything to drink and his head hurt. You know how much it would have hurt even more if long, long thorns would pierce his head. And some people believed, even believed that it would pierce his skull. That those nails, those thorns from the prickly vine would pierce his skull and even get into his, his brain, his gray matter. It was incredible pain. And after they put the crown of thorns, the purple robe, and they whipped his back, you know what the Roman soldiers did? They bowed down and said, Oh, hail king of the Jews. Hail king of the Jews. They expected him not to be a king. But the truth of the matter is, he is not just a king, not just some king of this world. He is the king. They missed it. He deserves a real crown. He deserves a real robe. He deserves people to bow down before him because his kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is eternal. His kingdom is the universe. And it's not just the Jews. It's not just the Gentiles. It is all of creation. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. If Jesus Christ is the King, over all this world, and if he's king over you, this means two things. Number one, if Jesus Christ is king of you, that means he's in total control. He is sovereign over all things. There are no surprises for Jesus. 
Nothing happens out of his mind or his will or eternal decree. Everything is happening according to plan. You know what that means? You can trust him. You don't have to worry. Some of you guys are so worried about how your family will turn out. Some of you are so worried about what college you will go to. Or if you do well in school, some of you are so worried that, that, that you don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend and everyone else seems like they're, they, they get a lot of attention. Some of you are so worried. But Jesus is your king. And he's in control. Some of you worry so much about the smallest things. And do you know what you need to do today? You need to realize that the king of glory who went on the cross for you who planned everything from the beginning of time to the end. Nothing is uncertain for him. Everything is fixed. For this king to be your king, it would mean peace at last. You can have peace. That's the beauty of what it means to be a king, right? A king has control, total control. So don't worry. Some of you high schoolers, so funny. Some of you high schoolers are so worried who you'll marry. Some of you say, oh, I don't think I'll ever get married. Gosh, the Lord will take care of that. He'll take care of that too. All in his good timing. Some of you are worried about your mom and dad fighting. And maybe they fight so much and you're worried that they're divorced. Don't you know that you have a father who loves you in heaven? Don't you know that? He's taking care of you. He'll make sure you're okay because he's king and he's in control. Don't try to control things by your own self. Look to the God who is the king of the universe, who is in control of even the smallest minutia. Matthew 6 says this. Look at the birds of the field. Look at the lilies of the valley. Look at those flowers and those birds. Who takes care of them? I do. I'm the king of the world. I take care of them. Hey, how much more do I love you than a stupid bird? I love you much more than a lily or a flower. So don't worry. He's king and he's in control.